today we are going to talk about human memory. You know the memory is our ability to remember. The word memory is coming from the Latin root memoria which means remembrance. So it is our ability to retain and remember of the past experiences with or without awareness, with or without effort. Memory involves a few mechanisms, very dynamic mechanisms of storing, retaining and retrieving. So it is a capacity to encode, to store and to retrieve information. Where do we get this information from? It is coming through our senses, our five senses to receive information and then we organize and alter it and then we put it in a safer place and then whenever it is needed we retrieve it. So basically this human capacity of memory is enable, enables us to use our past experiences or information that which has already been stored in our system to use it for the uh, future. So there are basically three processes or components or operations involved in this human memory system. These are the three interrelated components. One is encoding, second is storage and the third is uh, retrieval. So what is encoding? Encoding is the process that puts information to be remembered into a form that the memory system can accept and use. See, let us imagine a computer. Just you imagine Google. You are typing, what is the weather in New York City right now? You're typing these words and the computer immediately gives you the result. Do you think that what you're typing is exactly how the computer is understanding? It is not. Computer has its own programming language. It understands the encoded words, phrases, sentences and then it understands. You must have seen people doing this uh, computer programming who just puts uh, a certain uh, symbols and, and uh, uh, alphabets and numbers and then at the end of the time, you know, it becomes what when you type how old are you, the computer gives an answer. So there is a process of encoding happening already there in, in the computers and similarly in our human system as well. So how you transform a physical sensory input of any of the senses into a kind of representation that can be understood and placed in the memory is called this encoding. So it is uh, receiving our sensory input and transforming it into a cord that can be stored. Second process is called the storage. You know, we know that uh, uh, we have in the computer again, you know, there is something called the ROM and the RAN. So this storage is very essential to whatever that has been encoded. So the storage of the memory is the process of retaining whatever that you have encoded which is to be placed in some somewhere. So this is a process of retaining the encoded information into the memory. It is called the storage. Very, very simple thing. It is holding the information in the memory over the time. So we'll, we will understand, you know, which are the ways or which are the uh, types of this storage in, in, the, uh, in a few minutes. And the third process is called the retrieval. Retrieval is calling back. It is a process of gaining access to the already encoded, already encoded and processed and stored information when it is to be used. As I mentioned earlier, this retrieval may not always happen with your awareness, it may even come without your awareness, without, without, your, without your conscious effort. So this retrieval is the bringing into consciousness, the awareness, into awareness, this whatever information that is already been stored in your memory system. Now um, as we proceed further, let me just talk about uh, the three uh, types of memory or three systems of memory. There is something called a sensory memory. And then another stage is called the short term memory or working memory and then there is something called the long term memory. 
and uh, before explaining each and every stage of it further I just wanted to let you just feel like you know sensory memory is a very 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 short period of uh, gathering the information which is many times it is very less very much less than a second and uh, the short term memory is probably up to 15 to 20 seconds but definitely less than a minute and long term memory is definitely something which is being stored in our systems for really some time and uh, this long term memory can also be looked through another set of divisions which is called explicit memory and uh, implicit memory the word explicit as we know it is conscious memory implicit is unconscious memory and then uh, it can also be further understood through the explicit memory can be understood as a declarative memory which involves uh, like includes like facts and events and that again can be understood in terms of episodic memory and semantic memory episodic memory means uh, you know the the memory of the the information of those things which happened as an event in your life or experience that you had in life and semantic memory is like uh, concepts and facts and and things like that so for something to become a memory we all know that it must be first picked up by one or one or more of our senses then only it can become a memory if it is not been picked it is not it is gone so let, let me just uh, explain to you a concept like you know imagine you walking to a busy airport or a railway station or place like that where, where there is a lot of commotion and movement in an airport as you walk in you know you see people are rushing about and people passengers moving through the security and uh, people are talking and laughing and crying and it's definitely a place where you know people say a goodbye to their loved ones as well so there is a lot of hugging and uh, crying and laughing and talking so as you walk in and you're basically glancing through a large uh, you know set of people who are definitely in a picture and you're just looking through and uh, you may not remember anything and uh, you just then you notice that there is a uh, video screen which so talks about uh, the the uh, status of the flights and you're looking at it and uh, you just looked and you know everything is there you know your your flight is coming into the gate number 10 and you're just going through that and and all of a sudden you're like what oh my god it's delayed again see you just glanced to the screen and said everything is fine and all of a sudden you remembered that did i see something different there so you're looking at the screen and say yes my god it's already been half an hour delayed and now it's again delayed another 20 minutes because of the weather whatever that may be the reason so this sort of that that you know in a flash of a, si a second you're looking at the screen and then you kind of felt like you you sensed and you see you saw something which is called the sensory memory and uh, all other information which you see has gone so the incident may seem at first to you have more to do with a uh, pain of the modern travel with the memory but but then it is definitely not just uh, you know the delay in that sequence of the flight status is not that is bothering you but rather it is our ability to kind of save the information which is probably uh, meaningful to you that is what is staying with your memory system which in other words called uh, you know sensory memory so sensory memory is the it is the shortest term element of memory. It is our ability to look at an item for a second and then remember what it looked like. You know, it is said that uh, uh, this memory system, the sensory processes are happening approximately some 200 to 500 milliseconds after an item is perceived. Uh, so we know that this, you know, we are using our five senses. We have this sensory register, uh, you know, sensory memory to be understood as i talk as i said about the the airport when you're walking in you know there is there are a lot of people so it, it is it contains a large capacity of information whether you need it or not you know that you're you're glancing through a lot of people but you at this point are looking at, at the screen and out of all the 35 gates you are worried only about the gate number 10 so the large capacity of information is there and you're taking it everything else is gone this short duration is what is important at this point so these are the these are the uh, very important areas now let us look at this short term memory so now we we said sensory memory now we come to the short term memory short term memory you know compared to the sensory memory it is a limited capacity 
and uh, for you to take any information from this sensory memory to the short term memory, you need uh, a rehearsal. You, 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 this rehearsal maintains the information uh, which probably will take you to the, the next level of it which is called the long term memory. This has a, a capacity of about uh, 7 plus or minus 2 items to be stored at a time uh, which I will explain uh, uh, in, in the coming minutes. And then it's, uh, you know, it is understood that uh, the duration of the short term memory is about 18 to 20 uh, seconds definitely less than a minute and uh, th there can be also cases like uh, you know the short term memory can also associate with whatever is already uh, stored in your long term memory can be retrieved and used here in the short term memory as well when in the case of working memory. So now let us talk about a, a concept called the Miller's magical number. It was George Miller who discovered like you know we humans have a capacity of the short term memory uh, to remember things probably 7 plus or minus 2 uh, ways. Uh, to say like you know uh, we, whatever that we remember whatever that we are going to remember has to be in the form of 7 or 8 or 9. Like if I say numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the maximum capacity of remembering a, a chunk, a group of information which is also called uh, whatever that has a meaning or made together is called a chunk. So this minus plus or minus uh, of 2 of 7 is our chunks of information that could reside in our short term memory simultaneously. I will give an example. So let us consider the following list of 21 letters. It is, uh, you can read it. I hope uh, P, B, S, F, O, X, C, N, N, A, B, C, C, B, S, M, T, V, N, B, C. Does it make any sense? Does it make any sense to me? So let us consider this list and uh, I am going to convert them into seven meaningful chunks. Now let us read it again. The same words I converted into here like uh, PBS, Fox, CNN, ABC, CBS, MTV and NBC. So now that it has been converted into something meaningful, so it was very difficult for us to recall the letters after one exposure, but suppose they were presented as meaningful uh, letters or chunks, it will be remembered. So our ability is to remember, our ability to remember is, they say, 7 plus or minus from the uh, you know the the available information. So there are two types of rehearsal we have in our remembering process. One is called maintenance rehearsal. Maintenance rehearsal is very important for the students. Uh, there are students who read a lot when the parents say like, oh, are you studying honey? And you're like, yes, I'm studying. And you know, the parents can hear you sitting in another room and reading it loud continuously. And I used to say like, you know, uh, when students are studying, uh, their neighbors study better than the students themselves because the, in the morning onwards you are reading it loud, but then you don't study, the neighbors study. Let us look at what is maintenance here. So maintenance here is this information in short term memory uh, which is held in, uh, in, uh, in a method called maintenance rehearsal which is the repeating of information silently or aloud so that it is recalled immediately when needed. So we, we are trying to maintain it. We are reading it out loud or silently going through it and then once you finish one paragraph you come back and reading it again and you're reading it again or you're understanding it again. So that is called a maintenance rehearsal. And the next one is called elaborative rehearsal. Elaborative, elaborative rehearsal is the uh, thinking about the meaning of the information and connecting it to other information already stored in the memory. So the moment uh, you see this PBS and Fox and CNN and ABC, you already know that what is it? This is TV channels, right? You already have an information which is stored there. That is the reason this elaborate rehearsal makes it very, very easy for you uh, to remember things better because now that 21 letters is not valid anymore. They are only seven concepts, seven chunks. Only PBS, Fox, CNN, ABC, CBS, MTV and NBC. So now let us look at uh, the long term memory. Long term memory, see now we have come to 
come from a sensory memory which is having a lot of information but a very short period of time and then the second is short term memory uh, with a comparatively shorter capacity of information for a uh, shorter period of time and uh, now coming to long term memory here the capacity is virtually unlimited it's like you're storing everything in your rack one by one and it's been kept there and how much is it kept for i would say it is for the lifetime it is forever and the information which is organized according to the meaning as we mentioned in the chunks you know meaning and then it is linked associatively you know when i talk about this you need to remember uh, think about a, a computer concept called a defragmentation uh, you know in a defragmentation process those of you know computers and those who are doing this can understand you know the files are being kept in the hard disk in uh, in certain areas which probably in the uh, video formats and the music and uh, word and pdf and uh, photos and pictures and and other animations whatever that you have in the computer is going to a particular place and it's been kept there and once you delete uh, probably 10 gigabytes of a, a data from the system which includes maybe a couple of movies and uh, some hundreds of pictures and maybe a few music uh, so files as well this this hard disk will be you know kept blank in that area so the the system defragmentation is done to a manually to a computer which makes all the video files to go to the their designated place and the, all the uh, the music files to go to the re- designated files and you know a computer will show you a place where in like everything is placed in the right place because it has been associated with the meaning with the, the types uh, uh, supposed to be now let us look at uh, the types of long term memory long term memory can be div- uh, divided as we mentioned previously like in various formats and one is called explicit or declarative memory the word itself is i believe very, very explanatory and uh, declarative memory or ex- explicit memory is uh, uh, remembering of uh, the memory which are involved with the fact and knowledge and personal experiences it is talking about the fact and semantic memory which is a part of the explicit memory which is impersonal facts and everyday knowledge which are connected there and episodic memory is a personal experience linked to with a specific times and places or our experiences that you had for example if i'm talking about my uh, last birthday party or someone who got married or my maybe my brother's wedding anniversary that i attended or things like that so any event an episode that happened that is talking about episodic memory and then uh, the second type of the uh, long term memory is called ex- uh, implicit memory or procedural memory it is talking about the skills you know those of you i hope everybody knows cycling bicycling and uh, many of you might know driving swimming all these things are coming under the procedural memory so this is a long term memory of uh, conditioned response and learned skills so driving is a very good example i believe for this so uh, let us now look at before i conclude what we were just talking about like memory organizational chart we began by saying which are the three processes like the the encoding the storage and the retrieval and the memory chart begins with a sensory memory and uh, which is a very 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 short period of time and the large information and then it is been uh, uh, by your attention that some of those large sum is been uh, accepted and then taken to the short term memory and then you processed it you make some connection to that and then that is called the short term memory third one is long term memory in which we already said like the procedural memory the declarative memory the semantic memory and uh, the episodic memory we will continue in the next hour